I'm Sarah Newman. I'm the director of art and education at MetaLab at Harvard, at Harvard University, which is part of the Berkman Klein Center for Internet and Society. The AI Pedagogy Project is a project I lead out of Harvard, but it's a completely open resource for anybody to use or contribute to. And it's essentially a collection of resources for educators, especially educators from non-technical fields. So folks coming out of social sciences or liberal arts who are curious about this moment in AI and know it's important to think about AI and to understand AI, but don't really know where to start. So what we've done is curated existing materials, written some material for educators to help situate them in this pretty overwhelming space with a very grounded, uh, clear perspective. The center of the site is assignments that use AI, but do so in a critical way and bring AI technologies or AI tools into dialogue with a particular subject matter. So, for example, history or journalism or these subject matters that don't require you to use AI, but that AI can be in productive dialogue with. So we have these curated assignments uh, that other educators can discover, use, adapt, however they might like. But when photography came along, people said painting is dead. And painting isn't dead, it just changed. Painting actually got more abstract because cameras were so good at capturing the world realistically that it freed painting to do, like, you know, we, then we saw impressionism and abstract expressionism and all these other movements. So painting evolved. And there's also still very photorealistic painting and the camera became a tool. I see this as the same. I think it's, it's scary, but I don't think it's gonna make writing obsolete. It's not gonna make uh, writing skills obsolete. It's actually gonna make them more important because as we're reading, what these models are producing, we need to be able to edit them or judge them. And that requires having the, the skills to write. Same with drawing. I mean, you, I mean, one thing that's interesting is that you shouldn't need to draw to be an artist. You know, I mean, I'm an artist and I'm not a good drawer. And so if we can use these tools and leverage these tools to do what we want to do creatively, I see there's a, there's a big opportunity here. So I think artists rightfully have concerns about, was their writing used to train a model that's now not giving them any credit? Can something work in an artist's style without attributing it to them or paying them for all their time and for all their work? So I think that these are legitimate questions. And I think as we see how these technologies are used, we're gonna come up with hopefully better forms of compensating the artist, just as we've seen with streaming music it used to be that everything was pirated and you know you could use Napster and musicians weren't making any money. Now they're not making very much, but at least with streaming services, they're getting some small compensation for when people listen to their music. Hopefully we'll see the same with art. And in this moment, I think teachers are especially important and especially relevant for helping students understand how to navigate around these tools for understanding what's safe and what's not safe for understanding when information could be completely incorrect and how to check those sources with you know peer-reviewed sources or published books or other materials so i think the role of teachers is in helping guide and navigate students right now as students are graduating into a world with more and more tools available more and more of AI technologies are embedded and hidden in things we use in our everyday lives. And so I think teachers should be, as they always have been, at the forefront of this. The way to do that is through the teachers having their own literacy around these tools, not necessarily understanding them at the level of the code, but understanding the basics of how they work, understanding how they're trained, understanding what they do well, what they do poorly, what some of the risks are, and how those risks don't distribute evenly. So risks for non-native speakers might be different than risks for native speakers. People working on a paid version of a tool or who can afford a paid version of a tool might have a different opportunity than those who are working with the free tools. So understanding the landscape and helping students wisely and thoughtfully navigate this landscape, I, I believe is the role of teachers right now. So this is an opportunity to revisit what's important about pedagogy 
how we're teaching, why we're teaching, who we're teaching to. Even when the internet came along, it was a, it was a chance for teachers to re revisit how they're teaching because now everybody has Google in their pocket. So we're not doing as much memorization because we have access to knowledge, but rather critical thinking and media literacy. So this is another opportunity. We have different tools at our disposal. Teachers can help students learn what the tools can do, what they can't do. And teachers can use the, the tools to make their own teaching better. At least that's the hope. And some teachers won't use the tools and that's perfectly fine. And it's not like this stuff should be everywhere all the time. But at least teachers having a working knowledge of what the tools do will help equip their students because the students are curious and the students want to know and the students are already using the tools. So I think for us as educators, whether we choose to or not, we need to be able to discuss why or why not, what our concerns are, what some drawbacks are, or I think in an ideal world, do both. Have some assignments that we might design with AI tools or that we might ask students to use AI tools, have some assignments that are completely absent the use of any AI, and then have a meta discussion about what was different, what did we learn differently, what do we have more recollection of, what do the students find more intriguing or interesting, why do the students hypothesize that something went in a certain way when you used AI versus used a textbook, and then also what are the biases in our own textbooks? So, you know, we know AI has a lot of bias, but so does each individual, and Maybe this is a chance to not only interrogate the biases that our AI tools have, because they certainly have biases because they're trained on human data, but humans have biases too. too. And so this is a chance to bring that, that conversation back to the forefront. One memory that really stands out to me was my freshman year in college. I was taking an ethics course, an applied ethics course, and with a professor named David McCabe as a philosophy course. When it was a small seminar class and before the professor returned our first papers, he told us what the grades were. There's three A's, there's six B's, there's seven C's, there's two D's and there's two C me's. So then he's giving back the papers and I thought, C me, what is that? I thought it sounded like a grade. He's giving back the papers People are taking their papers and leaving until there's two of us sitting in the classroom. And it was the see me's. And I, I went to public school, you know, throughout. I thought, what is a see me? I've never gotten a see me. And so he gave us our paper, papers and he said, I gave you a see me because I want you to keep working on this essay because it's really promising. And I want you to push your ideas further. It's, it's good, but I think it could be even better. And there's something here, that, like there's basically something I see in you. And so I want you to come to my office hours. We're gonna talk more about your ideas. Maybe you're holding back on some of your opinions, et cetera. And then I want you to push your philosophical ideas further. So I was intrigued. I, re I will remember this for the rest of my life. I ended up getting my degree in philosophy, but I went to his office hours. We talked about my ideas. I, I wrote the paper, I extended the paper. I ended up getting an A on the paper. But for him to see that and to take that interest in me and say, this isn't sufficient, I want you to work more, was something I never had in my education. And it's something that, as I said, I will always remember.